Hello and welcome to Kenya School of Technology Studies. Today we are going to look at fundamentals of information communication technology, topic computer hardware, lesson three. My name is Jackson, your instructor. Welcome. By the end of this lesson, you are supposed to have covered the following. The definition of computer hardware, input devices and peripheral or and processing devices. Let us start with the definition of the term computer hardware. Computer hardware is a collection of machines which form a complete computer system consists of central processing unit and peripheral devices. Now let us look at input devices. An input device is a peripheral device that converts symbols that people understand into bits that computer can process. An input device includes a keyboard, a terminal, a touch screen, a mouse, a scanner, etc. Now let us look at categories of input devices. The first one is keying device, e.g. keyboard that is used for typing or entering data into a computer. A user types characters, numerics and special symbols using a keyboard. The input usually appears on a monitor. It can be connected to a computer system through a terminal. A terminal is just a form of input and output device. There are three types of terminals, namely dump terminal. This is an input or output terminal that does not have a capability of processing. It only enters and receives data without processing. Smart terminal. This terminal has some processing capability. It has a small memory. It performs some editing of data before sending them to the main computer or to a main computer. Intelligent terminal. This is a terminal that has a full processing capability. The terminal has a processing unit, primary storage. It may or not have local storage. Recently, most intelligent terminals have local disk. An intelligent terminal is actually a microcomputer with communications capability. Let us now look at keyboard layouts. The first one, QWERTY. QWERTY indicates the arrangement of the upper left corner six of the keyboard. And we also have there a pictorial representation of such a layout. The other one is AZT, slightly modified from the QWERTY keyboard. The other one is DORAC. This keyboard is devised to increase typing speed by placing frequently used keys more naturally. And also we have a typical picture of uh, this type of layout. Examples of a wireless keyboard and also a mouse, they are well represented or indicated there by that Victoria diagram or picture. Now let us look at pointing devices. So we start with the first one, mouse, an object used as a pointing and a drawing device. The other one is light pen. A light pen is a light sensitive pen device used for pointing it at the display service. And also we have a picture of a light pen that is well indicated there. Let us now look at digitizer tablet. A digitizer tablet is also called a graphic tablet or just a digitizer. The digitizer is a drawing tablet used to sketch new images or trace old drawings or photograph. The user uses a pen-like device called a cursor to draw images. The other input device is touch screen. A touch screen is a monitor screen that allows users to interact with, with a computer system by touching an area of the display. The other type of input device is scanning devices. Scanning devices or scanners can be used to input images and characters directly into a computer. A scanner is a device that reads spatial pattern such as images, graphics, and text, and then generates digital signals 
of that pattern. Categories of scanning devices. We have two of them. The first one is optical scanners. They capture data using light. E.g., we have OCS. We also have OMR. We also have optical bar recognition. We also have optical character scanner. That is now the OCS, as well as it is indicated there. The other one, or the other type of scanner is magnetic scanners. They capture data using magnetic technology. There are two types of magnetic scanners, magnetic character reader and magnetic stripe recognition. Let us now look at MICR. It's a character recognition technology adopted mainly by the banking industry to facilitate the processing of checks. The other one is magnetic stripe reader. It's a hardware device that reads the information encoded in the magnetic stripe located on the back of a plastic badge. It is composed of iron-based magnetic particles encased in plastic-like tape. Again, now let us look at part 3 of the processor. It's a part of computer that decodes and executes instructions. It is referred to as the heart of the, or the brain of a computer. That is now the central processing unit. Let us now look at functional units of the processor, as it is well indicated there by that diagram. We have input and the processor. And the processor is made up of three main components, that is control unit, arithmetic logic unit, and the main memory. And then we have the output, and lastly, secondary storage. Now let us explain further the functional units of the CPU. We start with input devices. Input devices enters program and data into computer system. The other one is central processing unit. This is the part of the computer that processes the data. It consists of main memory, the control unit, and arithmetic logic units. Main memory is a temporary storage that is used to hold programs and data during execution or processing. We have the control unit. It controls execution of programs. The other one is arithmetic logic unit performs actual processing of data using program instructions. The other, the other device or the other unit is output device. Displays information that is processed by the computer system. Another one there is storage devices. It's a permanent storage of data and programs before and after it is processed by the computer system. Communication devices. Communica communication devices enable communication with other computers. Now let us look at memory. This part is used to store data and instruction. It holds data and instruction awaiting execution and also holds information awaiting output. There are mainly two types of memories. So main memory is made up of semiconductor memories which are relatively fast but expensive. Examples of the two main types of memory are RAM, random access memory, and read-only memory, that is ROM. Let us start with the first one, RAM. RAMs are used in computer for the temporary storage of programs and data. Data can be written and read from RAM easily. They store information or data so long as the power is on. Hence, RAM is also characterized as it is volatile. Since it is easy to change the contents of a RAM, RAMs are the working memory of a computer system, i.e. where data is manipulated. 
there are mainly two types of RAMs. You now look at static RAM, that is SRAM, and dynamic RAM, DRAM. RAMs normally come into different capacities. These capacities are, we have 16 MB, 32 MB, and we also have another one there as 1 GB. And different types, it also comes in different types and also in different speeds or models, e.g. like Edo or EDORAM and also SDRAM. Static RAM, as I at least can explain further, static RAM is a high-speed memory that actually is used to hold the data as long as the power is on. The other one is, the other one as uh, termed as DRAM, it also holds data, but this is for a short while as still as long as the power is, uh, is on. There is one characteristic between all these types of RAM that they are only used to hold data as long as the power is on. Now let us look at room, read only memory. The information stored in a room can only be read but cannot be altered during normal operations. The information is not lost when the power goes off and hence rooms are non-volatile. Rooms are designed to hold data that are either permanent or will change frequently. Types of rooms include PROM, that is programmable read-only memory. We also have EPROM and EARPROM. PROM, this is a case whereby once a program has been written in this section, it cannot be deleted. EPROM, when a program has been written in this section, it can be deleted. The other one is EARPROM. EARPROM, when a program happens to develop a problem, i.e. especially maybe one module of that program, one is not forced to delete the whole program. You can delete only that module or segment that has a problem, then without affecting the other programs or without affecting the smooth running of the computer, and then this small module or this part of a program module can be rewritten somewhere else or corrected, then later be joined with the other modules and computer will still continue working smoothly. It is not like the case with EPROM, whereby even if only one part of the module is the one that has developed a problem, one will be forced to delete the whole program, then rewrite it, then, re then correct it, and then rewrite it in the same, same section. In EPROM, one Will, it has now advantage of deleting only that one part without affecting the other segments of the program. The more memory, the more your programs or the more programs you can run at once. Again, the more or they often mean they often more means faster computer. Meaning, if your computer has more memory, therefore it means you can process programs at a very fast speed. Now let us look at other types of memory. We have cache memory, which is a high speed memory. It is used to interface the slow communicating main memory to the CPU. Other types of memory are like bubble memory, holographic memory, core memory, and semiconductor memory. There marks now the end of lesson three, topic computer hardware. Welcome to our next lesson. Thank you.